Good morning. All right, I hope everybody um, is doing an awesome job of celebrating this St. Patrick's Day. I know that in my own neighborhood, we are actually hanging shamrocks in our windows. So uh, later today, my kids will be uh, joining a really, well, not joining, but we're gonna be participating as a neighborhood, walking around and doing a really fun shamrock uh, scavenger hunt through the neighborhood. So if you're looking for a way to entertain your kids later today, uh, it might be smart to walk around and do a scavenger hunt within your own neighborhood, not necessarily with shamrocks. There's lots of different ways that you can do it. So um, first off, thank you so much. I have received so many awesome text messages, Facebook messages, um, posts to both my personal page and to uh, my business page of your beautiful, gorgeous bug jars from yesterday. Um, I've seen several of them hanging in the windows of our neighborhood. So huge shout out to my neighbors who are participating with us. So um, today we are going to be drawing out a pot of gold. Now, I'm going to make this a little bit different than yesterday in that I am going to fix my mistake and make sure that you know you cannot pause if you're following me live, okay? Yesterday there was um, several people that said, oh goodness, we paused and then it skipped forward. And that's because I don't know how the internet works sometimes. So I accidentally told people that they could pause and then I wouldn't move ahead, but then I jumped way ahead. So I hope that wasn't a huge frustration for you guys as you were going throughout your day. All right, so today we are creating these pot of gold, okay? Now, I actually borrowed this lesson from an art teacher that I follow on Instagram named Two Art Chambers, and they created this rainbow box. And so what I've done is I'm actually going to be replacing the box with a pot of gold, but I will be showing you how to draw this box throughout the lesson. So if you have older kids at home that are looking for a way to participate, this is going to be an extension activity um, that will add um, just another depth of difficulty. So let me set this aside and we'll go ahead and get started. So since I'm making two projects today, I'm actually gonna have two pieces of paper out. So that way, if you're following along with the pot of gold, you're gonna follow one piece of paper. If you're following along with the box, you're going to be following this piece of paper. So today's supplies, you're going to want to have a pencil, eraser, okay? You'll want to have a Sharpie. If you don't have a Sharpie, just a regular black marker will be fine. White paper, obviously. Um, these are, this is a nine by 12 piece of paper I cut in half, but my sample piece is nine and a half by 12. You're going to have markers. And then I'm actually going to show you guys today this really cool new supply that my mom mailed to my girls a couple weeks ago. These are Crayola paint markers, and I'm gonna demo with these in a little while, okay? And then if you have a metallic Sharpie on hand, great. So you can differentiate your gold from your yellow stripe in your rainbow. If you don't have a metallic Sharpie, you could also use a gold crayon or wing it. You'll figure it out. Everyone here is incredibly resourceful and we're getting more resourceful by the day. Am I right? Okay. So building our pot of gold. The first thing that we want to do is we want to start by drawing the rim of our pot, okay? I use my hands for measurement all the time. Using your hands for measurement is a really great way for you to figure out if your picture is going to be the correct size in order to fit everything in it. So my hand is about as wide as the top of my pot, okay? So when you go to draw the top of your pot, you want it, your hand to fit comfortably inside of it. Now remember, I'm using two smaller pieces of paper today, so the scale is going to be just a little bit off, but I'm sure that you will be able to figure it out, okay? So I want my pot of gold to start right around the middle of my paper. So I'm gonna come to the middle of my paper, and I'm actually just going to make that large hook shape. This is gonna be so similar to yesterday's project with our bug jars. And so this is a really easy way for us to take a skill we learned yesterday and to apply it to a new project today, okay? 
So what you're going to do is you're going to start with this large rim. I'm in the middle of my paper. And then I'm going to make it look almost like a canoe. I'm going to actually bring my line around and hook it to the other side. Okay. Then very similar to our bug jar yesterday, for the bottom of our pot of gold, I'm just going to draw that U shape. Now let me go over here. I've already mentioned this once, but a lot of people have joined us since I said this. I'm drawing this box shape for kids that would like to go a little bit further with the project. Um, so let's get our box shape drawn. All right. So for our box shape, we want our box to start right around the same place on the paper. So I'm actually going to draw a straight line across, okay? I've left, again, I use my fingers measuring a lot. I left about two finger spaces on either side of that line. So now what I'm going to do, and this is going to look a little strange, but stay with me, okay? I'm going to actually draw two lines so that it looks like a letter H that's been run over by a truck, okay? So I've got two lines that come out from either side there, okay? Then I can draw a line that goes straight across. I've now created the front flap of my box, okay? To but create the bottom of my box, I'm going to find that point right there and this point right here. Okay, I'm going to make an imaginary line through the edge of that flap and I'm going to draw a straight line down because that what it's going to do is going to create the visual um, optical illusion that this box has a corner right there. Then I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to follow down and go on that side. Okay, now I can draw a line that goes straight across the bottom. Okay, well now we need to make the side flaps of our box, this shape and this shape right here. So I'm going to come to the back and I'm going to draw two little lines that come out, okay? See how they're parallel? Or sorry, man, don't come to me for math lessons. So you're going to have them so that they, go, that they start over here and it's going to be the same line, okay? And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to make an angled line inside that. That's an acute angle. Okay. Ha <laughs> ha. See, I can do a little bit of math. I made these lines down here longer and these short, shorter. This is called foreshortening because when I connect my two lines together, it's going to make that box flap look like it's going back in space. So again, my front line is longer. My back line is shorter. Connect the two. If you're just joining the party, just know, I yesterday I said that you could pause these videos. That is not true. I, you can pause them if you're in my replay mode, if you are watching this later. But if you're watching it with me live right now, if you pause it, it's going to actually skip ahead. Okay, so let's get our rainbows drawn. Now, one of the best things that I liked about this project when I saw it online is that there was no limitation on what the rainbows looked like. So I saw rainbows that were actually six streams of raindrops that were going into the box so that it looked like a red stream of raindrops, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, okay? I saw one that was lightning. So I'm actually going to do some lightning on this side and I'll do a regular rainbow on this side. For both of these, you want to start in the very middle because there's six colors in your rainbow and you're going to need seven lines, okay? So we're going to start on both of them by drawing a line in the middle. So for this one, I'm going to make a wavy line that goes up, okay? For this one, I think I'm going to make a jagged line. All right, so again, I started in the middle. Now I'm going to need three similar lines to the right and three similar lines to the left. Same over here. Three similar lines to the right, three similar lines to the left, okay? So watch. One, and if it helps, count while you draw these. Two, 
three, okay? I didn't quite make it to my edge there, so I'm just gonna draw a line and just extend that, okay? This is why we have erasers in life. Do you see how I made that skinnier for shortening? Then I'm gonna come over here for my box one. I wonder if any of you out there are making two projects right now because you like a challenge. Two. Now watch on this one, I'm gonna get all the way to that edge. Three, okay. Now I can go to the other side. One, two, and look, I will make it on this side. Three, okay. One, two, mm, see, I won't make it on the box. Three, all right. So since I didn't make it all the way, I'm just gonna draw a straight line over because that's gonna make it look like that back line of that box going through there. Wow, look at that, that's really coming back in space, isn't it? Cool, all right. So let me show you these really cool paint markers. These are from Crayola. I'll be honest, I have no idea how much my mom paid for these. She, they showed up in a really fun um, St. Patrick's Day gift box that my mom sent last week. And the Crayola company decided that orange was not worth the effort, so they only made five colors. So we're going to do a little bit of color mixing today. Now, I also have my markers, okay? Tried and true, these are fantastic markers. You just got to make sure to keep those caps on. So these markers will work exactly like regular markers. Oh my goodness, did you guys realize that I just completely skipped a huge step that we need to do. We got to trace this. So if you have your Sharpie, I got so excited about those paint markers, I skipped ahead. If you've got your Sharpie, now's your chance to start tracing all those lines that you just drew. So again, if you're joining me live, if you press pause, it's going to actually speed you up And you know what? I got so excited about my box, I forgot my coins. Again, this is why we have erasers. As you can tell, I don't believe I'm going to be becoming a YouTube sensation anytime soon. So I'm just going to erase out the bottoms there, okay? Now, let's make some coins. So the way I'm going to make my coins is I'm going to draw some ovals. And I'm going to let those ovals float around. They kind of look like jelly beans. All right. So I've got my ovals. Now we can make them look 3D because that's kind of the name of the game here today. And to make them 3D, I'm going to go to each side of those ovals. Oh, look, I'm making a little bit of overlapping right there. I'm gonna to go to each side of those ovals. I'm gonna draw lines that go straight down and a rounded bottom. So like Mentos, or what is it? Necco wafers, that's what they look like. All right, you guys are so amazingly patient with me. I appreciate it so much. And if I wanted to, I could draw a few extra coins just here, there, fill up the space if you want. That's pretty much all it's gonna fit. Okay. Now I can keep going with my tracing. So you're gonna have a little bit of time here to catch up because you're going to watch me trace two projects. I went back and watched my video yesterday. I hope, and honestly, I watched it yesterday with my kids. I have three daughters. Obviously, we're all at home. Some may ask, why is my house so quiet right now? 
And that's because my kids are watching TV while I record this. And then we'll come back this afternoon and make it ourselves. Because it turns out my kids listen to me better when it's a recorded message than they do in real life. A big thumbs up from any parents that understand what I'm talking about would be lovely. Okay, so I've got that one traced. I can come over here, start doing my tracing over here. It was also really fun to see some kids that saw what we were going to do yet for today and they went ahead and make a demo piece. So I'd be interested to know, is everything we're doing very similar to what you thought we were going to be doing? Hope you guys have gotten the chance to experiment with art supplies while you're home. Back to where I was before I realized I was two steps ahead. All right, so these are these Crayola paint markers. I've seen similar products to these advertised to me um, with different, uh, I don't know, push ads. These are so cool. I may get like an adult set of these because they do make them for adults. But it's kind of nice that these are for kids because I'm not as concerned if, well, or when they wear out. But these are really cool. Now, like I said, Crayola did not make orange. So I'm going to have to do some color mixing. So if you ever have to do this, you always start with your color that has less um, value in it or less pigment in it. Yellow always has the least amount of pigment. We all know that because remember, the yellow marker is always the one that gets that grayish green tip on it when you drag it through other colors. So I'm going to make my own orange. Now remember, red and yellow are both primary colors. So if I take my yellow and I put a little bit of red on top of it, I'm going to actually create an orange. So my kids have used these every day for at least 20 minutes at a time for several days now. And you can see that they're, they're holding up pretty well. And they've got a lot of really great flow to them. They are not washable, my friends, because this was from yesterday and it's still on my thumb. So if you are the type of parent um, that still has... a uh, some things in their house that aren't ruined. Maybe this isn't the best art supply for you. Look at that blue though. I mean, it's just so gorgeous. So you're either taking your markers or your paint pens, like what I'm doing here, filling in that rainbow. There is nothing that says your rainbow has got to be rainbow colored. Okay. So if you want to have neon pink, and a, gray, a neon pink and gray rainbow, that be my guest. That is fine with me. All right. For the sake of time, I'm going to skip coloring this rainbow. I'll give you a quick preview. Yada, yada. Go through. We know the colors of the rainbow. We're going to move on. Okay. So <clears throat> for our pot of gold, what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk to you guys about shading, okay? I did some scribble shading on this pot of gold, and I did that because I wanted to make it look shiny, like it was a cast iron pot, okay? So to do that, I'm going to say I didn't know Sharpie could run away that fast, okay. 
All right. To do that, what you're going to do is you're going to get a real loose hand. Okay. Many times when we're coloring, especially when I was coloring up here, I wanted to stay in the lines. I wanted everything to stay really nice and neat. For scribble shading, I'm actually letting my hand be loose. This is how a lot of animators do shading. So if you're really into like the idea of cartooning, this is how a lot of cartooning happens. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of doing on purpose scribbling. So I'm just kind of shaking the pen or the marker over the surface and I'm just letting it be a little bit heavier towards the edge and a little bit lighter towards the middle. Worst case scenario, let's say that this goes really poorly for you. Worst case scenario, you're just going to color it in black, okay? So I'm using this like scribble shading and I'm just, this is such an easy way to relax. And I want to pick out, whoops, sorry. I want to pick out where my highlight's going to be. I'm going to put it in the same spot because that's where I'm going to make sure that I don't put too many scribbles, okay? And so I'm just having fun with this. I'm not going to lie. If you're type A, this is going to be a little stressful. Do a little bit of cross hatching. Cross hatching is when you color one direction like that. Color another direction on top of it. Just makes it a little bit darker in there. What I'm doing is I'm just kind of rounding it out. I'm making sure that the furthest away from my highlight is the darkest. And then I'm just kind of building it up. Whew. I don't know if you guys can, but I can definitely smell this Sharpie. And I'm going to get really dark towards the bottom because it's the bottom of a cast iron pot. So it's going to be really dark. Now on your box, I don't, I didn't see any need to do shading on it. So once your rainbow is colored in, you can kind of play with it what you want. Maybe you want to turn it into something. I got a little bit out of the lines. So I'm just going to smooth my outline out. Okay, and then I'm going to create a little shadow under my pot of gold. Just a nice squiggle, nothing too horribly exciting. Someone just knocked on my front door. I'm going to dutifully ignore them in, for the sake of social distancing. All right, then, so if you hear a doorbell or my dog figure out that there's somebody at the door, I am so sorry. Now I'm gonna color in my coins. Final touch. Now I've gotta be careful with my, with my metallic Sharpie because my metallic Sharpie is actually a little bit stronger than my black Sharpie. So it's actually covering up those Sharpie ones. So I want to make sure to be really careful not to get a little overboard there. I'm just going to fill in all those little spaces with gold so that it looks nice and full of gold. Okay. Oh yeah. And then on my demo piece, I thought it would be really fun just to make a few, a few gold lines down there. Now, if you're using a gold crayon for this, you could totally do this with gold crayon. That would be really cool. All right. So there you go. You have this beautiful pot of gold. Hmm. So for tomorrow, I want to show you guys what we're making. I am so pumped about this because this is not only going to be an art project, this is going to be a game, okay? So this is a marble maze that I've created from paper, okay? I will be posting a picture of this as well as showing you all the, like a list of supplies, but just to get you guys really pumped about it like I am. For tomorrow, you're going to want to have either cardboard, so you could take a cereal box, cut it open, just use the back of the cereal box. This is poster board, okay? Or if you have cardstock, so you could have any of those, and you're going to want, oh, I need a bigger table space. You're going to want paper strips. Now, these paper strips are two inches wide, okay? 
I have made mine far too long. So I would probably cut these in half. So they're about two inches wide, probably between six and nine inches long. So when you see these tomorrow, they're going to be a little bit smaller, okay? You're going to need a pair of scissors. And then I wanted to show this to you guys because if you've ever been in one of my classes at school, you are going to recognize these, okay? You may even be able to build one at home. This is called a glue box. And what it is, it's a Rubbermaid container. And this is a sponge. You can actually hear it. That has glue that's been poured on it. So what I do is I take Elmer's wet glue and I will dilute it just a little bit. So about two parts glue, one part water. I shake it up real hard and then I pour it on top of the sponge. If you do this today, your glue sponge will be ready for tomorrow. So if you wanna do something like that, that's another activity that you've got for today. Um, and then if you can't do a glue sponge, then you're going to want to just have some sort of adhesive. Tape will work. Um, uh, glue, rubber, maybe not rubber cement. That might get a little fumigatey in your house. But anyway, have those ready for tomorrow. I really, I'm looking forward to these classes. So thank you so much for entertaining me as I entertain you. Tomorrow we will be making our paper mazes and this is just going to be really great. Uh, oh, one last note. Um, several of you have reached out to me as far as paying me. Um, I'm not, I'm not really comfortable with taking money for what has been so rewarding to me. So I actually spoke to someone at our local food bank. Um, they've had an uptick in, uh, asking for donations and they've seen an uptick in clientele. They serve 140 clients a week and they've had 10 new clients and feeding 10 new families can actually cost quite a bit. So I'm going to try to figure out a way for anyone who wants to donate towards the Brookline Food Bank to be able to do that through these videos. So I, I'm going to have to figure out how to be tech savvy over the next week or so, but I guess I, I have the time to do it. So anyway, um, I, I really care about you guys investing in creativity while we're all home, and I hope that you are able to show me your wonderful projects that you created today, and I will see you all tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.